Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. How to separate and differentiate yourself and brand personality using your unique sales proposition. Now, if I could maybe ask you what your actual value proposition is you know the thing that actually makes you different from everybody else and the reason why people should choose you over any other computer uh, competitor out there what would you say you see you might be a coach or a consultant and obviously your goal is to generate as many leads as possible but have you ever stopped to think what is it that you're actually putting out there that you want people to buy into um in as much as what it is that you're doing okay maybe you know some of the people that we work with all that come to us when we look at their websites you know they have you know vanilla uh usps uh that go you know like this you know they offer the best customer service or we we offer the best turnaround times or we offer superior quality than our competitors or we get to know our customers' business. Blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. All of these tired messages have been rehashed so many times that they've become meaningless to readers and they've, they actually have got no personality and no proof. And there's nothing that actually holds um, you know, you as the coach or consultant accountable to you saying you offer the best customer service. I mean, back in the time when there was no phones and emails and chatbots, you know, if you had a, a phone that people would ring, would ring and, you know, you would pick up in three minutes or less, that would be something that would be like, wow, that's unique. But these days you can't value yourself or differentiate yourself on customer service or offering superior quality because anybody can do what you're doing cheaper, better, faster. Even if you're consulting or training or providing information or whatever expertise, anything that you know right now can be found on Google. You could maybe think you are differentiating yourself by calling yourself a personal coach or an accountability coach or career coach, executive coach or leadership coach or strategic coach or team coach or specialty coach or whatever coach you're calling yourself today. Let me tell you something. All these tired and rehashed messages are not setting you apart. They're so ubiqu ubiquitous. Um, you know, that there might as well be just a placeholder on any website template. You know, when you go on a website template and it asks you, what is Lorem Ipsum? Yeah, that's how maybe some of the, um, you know, USPs that we're seeing in the marketplace are there. It's like eating cardboard. You know, most of them are dry. They're tasteless. They're unpalatable. Now, can you imagine your, I, you know, your target market is trying to make sense of the world around them. And there you are causing much more grief and making it harder for them to actually connect with you. And you know what, that's not to say that your USP isn't relevant or that your claims aren't true. I mean, they are true and it's, you know, obviously that's what you're providing. Yes, you are providing good customer care, but it's just that you might not, you might have to present them in a more compelling and much more believable way okay um and before resorting to maybe um you know these boring usps that we resort to as coaches and consultants you want to ask yourself why all right and i'm going to go through with you the the why aspects of this now when your customer is thumbing through social media they are not concentrating that much so you want to grab them by the collar of their shirt you know, and, and, and tell them why you are their best option. Why does your business do what, what it does? 
And why are you different to your competitors? Because it's very rare to be lucky enough to have a business in an industry that is not crowded by competition. You know, whether you're selling something or you're providing a service, you're going to have competing brands, companies, um, you know, and other consultants or coaches out there who want the same business that you do. And everyone is constantly seeking, um, you know, to secure that business. You're not the only player in your marketplace. So you need to tell your customers why you're the best option. Why does your business do what it does? And why are you different from your competitors? And you have to make it super, super easy for people who want to do business with you. Because how, how then are you going to compete with other people out there? And some uh, of our competitors are bigger players and they have deeper pockets and bigger teams. So you really want to make sure that whatever opportunity you have to express yourself and how you're different to, um, you know, your prospects, they have an understanding of why you have to be their best option. I mean, as a coach or consultant, marketing is just maybe one aspect of running a successful business. I mean, you're out there, you're trying to hire new staff, you're balancing books, and you have to drive growth and more. And it actually feels like a constant balancing act where you're pulled in multiple different directions all at once. At the end of the day, I know as a coach, your real goal is just to help your clients. You want to spend, um, you know, as much time as possible changing people's lives and solving people's problems. And you don't want to waste countless hours each week trying to navigate the complex world of online marketing. And you certainly don't want to spend yet another minute maybe on the phone having to beg people to hire your services. Unfortunately, you don't have to. You know what I mean? Because if you can explain to your potential customers why you are the best option and why does your business do what it does and why you're different from your competitors, I can guarantee you, you will have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But you're asking yourself, maybe how? And I want you to ask also how your customer is going to receive um, you know, these benefits that you're putting out there. This is when you start to clarify your message. And remember, we are talking to an audience that is jaded, that is oversubscribed, that has so much information that is dumb. So you want to explain to them and give them an opportunity to show and feel that you are the best option that they're going to be choosing. Okay, so when you're writing your unique uh, sales proposition there, you want to tell them how does your claim to be maybe customer focused actually play out in real life? What should they expect? Right. This is where you come up there and you actually start encouraging their dreams. You know why? Because these people have been going around like a headless chook trying to figure out how they can get away from their pain. And you encourage that, yes, what they're looking for is valuable and is valid. And that's the reason why your six step or seven step process is going to help them uh, escape that. And another, another, you know, method of you showing how you are unique is you, you know, what are the special processes that you do use, um, you know, to assure quality or service? Because that's when you justify your prospects failures. You, 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 you are acknowledging that they failed in the past. And the reason why they failed is because they didn't have the special processes that you have that you use to actually uh, assure the quality of the service that you're providing. And that in and of itself will make what you're doing unique because anyone with a pair of sweatpants and a laptop can start calling themselves a personal coach, an accountability coach, a career coach, an executive coach, a leadership coach, a strategic coach, a team coach. You can always download information uh, that makes that possible. But if you don't have special and unique processes that you can take people through, then you're not any different to, um, you know, other coaches out there. And you need to also let your customers know how will what you're telling them actually change their experience in a positive way. Because everyone that is coming to us is trying to run away from whatever pain they're going through. And if you will tell them 
how your process or how your methodology will actually change their experience in a positive way. Maybe they're looking uh, to get into a relationship. Maybe they're looking to get into a job. Maybe they're looking to get into a promotion. Maybe they're looking for a happier existence. How will you actually handhold them and show them that what they've been doing has been wrong all along and what you've got going is the right way to do it simply because you are actually telling them how your methods is going to change their experience in a positive way. Okay, because everyone is looking for these solutions. Everyone is looking for ways uh, on how they can get out of this humdrum uh, funk they've gotten themselves in. And you want to show them how your business is actually set up to serve your customers better. When people reach out to you or send out an email or an inquiry, do you respond to them? When people stop and pick up the phone to call you, um, are they going to be answered by some um, call center out in India or in the Philippines? How have you set up your business to actually serve your customers better? Remember, all these people are scared, they're dumb, they're stupid, and all they're just looking for is somebody to show them their way home. And the way home could be in your processes. It could be actually telling them how they can, um, you know, go through your courses, your experience, or maybe listening to your, um, um, you know, your speaking gigs and impact them in a positive way, you know? And after all of that, how do you put your money where your mouth is? How do you prove that you've got skin in the game? You know, like I said earlier on, anyone with a pair of sweatpants um, can call themselves a coach. If you've got a laptop and internet, you know, how are you going to put money, um, you know, where your mouth is? What credibility have you got? What, um, you know, uh, testimonials have you got? And what authority have you got within the marketplace to show people that you can actually help them by actually helping them? So all of this, I mean, all, all, all you got to do is make sure that your copy represents you in such a way that you're blindingly apparent, you know, what your value proposition is. Even without blasting the reader, uh, you know, you know, with so much information or bashing your reader over the head with run out of the mill statements like we're the best in this business. Of course. You might be the best in this business, but are you the best in their business? Are you the best in their world? You actually have to show people um, you can help them by actually helping them. Give them something they can grab onto. So your unique uh, sell, uh, selling proposition should, it should be implicit in every other bit of copy that you have. All right. It should actually be um, a clarity or a clear indication of who you are, what you do and why you're the best choice for them at this particular moment, because people don't want to waste time. People don't want to waste, um, you know, an opportunity to get the right um, solution on things that are not um, proven yet. So for me to be clear. This is not about you dancing around your USP with a bunch of maybe flowery text. It's about cutting the fluff and getting to the core with demonstrable, um, demonstrable proof. Okay, your customer needs to see proof beyond reasonable doubt that you are the right kind of person with the right kind of solution for the pain that they have. So you, instead of you saying customers are at the heart of our business. You want to share the details that, you know, undeniably prove that claim. So maybe the tone of your voice, your personality should all show the customers and prospects that they are the center of your attention. Okay, instead of saying we, we have high quality products, you ought to describe the differentiating factors that actually um, take away whatever doubt your customer might have in, your, in, in their mind. Because... Your customers have been jaded. They have been tricked by somebody else who claimed to be something that they're not. You're not the first person that they've come across who perpetrates to say they have a solution to whatever problem that they might be facing right now. So if you want to make more compelling claims, ask the questions your customers are going to ask you. What are the frequently asked questions? And don't settle for lazy, tired cliches that are already out there that nobody wants to hear anymore. All right. So the best way for you to make sure that you stand out is by really showcasing ideas and values that make your brand unique.
Now, these differentiators, um, you know, that detect your brand identity and the value are easy to spot for many uh, coaches and consultants, right? You read, you, you all, always maybe rely only, um, you know, you, you really have to take a look at what drew you into, um, you know, your business or what drew people into your business and then identify how you can make that um, USP that actually drives um, yourself to, you, that drives customers to you. All right. So one of the things that you can do is you can look at your competition, find out what your competition is um, you know, doing for their customers. All right. So let's say your competition is Tony Robbins. Go into Tony Robbins reviews and testimonials and find out what his customers and clients are actually saying about their service. All right. So in there, you'll be able to find, okay, so maybe, um, um, you know, they, they are using longer hours or maybe they are giving more information. Maybe they are giving, um, you know, more content that other people are not doing. So you want to go in and establish your brand, um, you know, as somebody that is doing more of those things because these customers have already raised up their hand to say, you know what, we can work, um, you know, with people like you. So your business wouldn't be a success at all if you didn't have something unique about it. Because if you're just yet another coach out there, let me tell you something. Nobody, nobody has time to get you wait for you until you've clarified your message or you've figured it all out. Okay. So the one way that you can actually see how you are unique in your um you know, in the provision of your service is you want to try and map the customer experience as it is right now. What are your customers going through and what are they coming back to you with in terms of saying, hey, thank you so much for doing this with me. Okay. So you want to write up what happens at each step and examine what the client is doing versus what they would have been doing if they went with your competition. What is it that they actually um, accepting or what is it that they're finding so easy, um, you know, to engage with while they're working with you. And within that analysis, you are likely to identify a few points, um, where you are actually providing something that others are not. And that is what the USP, um, is and that USP is what you will use to differentiate your brand and it makes it super super easy for you to use that in your marketing and for you to actually um, use that as a way to get more leads and actually grow your business so here's a quick example for maybe a coach um, who is maybe let's take for example a relationship coach somebody who's trying to help others be doing have a happier existence around um, you know other human beings all right so let's call this coach Sally so Sally is a relationship coach and she helps maybe single people find the right partner and advertises her success rate in so doing and we also now have uh, Ruth who is also a relationship coach, all right? And she helps single people find one date, but she also provides coaching afterwards to help both parties through any struggles within the first year of that relationship. Now, Sally would define her brand po uh, position and, you know, her USP as being the relationship coach that helps you find love, while Ruth will define her brand position and USP as being the relationship coach that helps you find a partner and then cultivate the relationship afterwards. Now, it will be relatively easy for you to identify your um, USP and then apply it to your own unique brand, okay? So there's companies like FedEx, okay, which is often talked about as an example because their USP is overnight shipping guaranteed. And not a lot of people could do it when they started. But nowadays, because, you know, transport has been made so available, it is now, there's so much competition out there now. So for their tagline when they started was when it absolutely positively had to be there overnight. All right. Back in the time, that was not possible. So you want to work on your USB, um, um, you know, so that you are maybe first in class 
Or you want to work your USB into your brand identity to a point that no one will have to ask you why they should choose you. Remember, the conversation in your customer's head is why are you the best option for them to be working with you right now? So once you've got that in play, once you've got that in check, it makes you stand out um, you know, from whatever it is that you're doing and providing the service for your customers uh, so that you can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So you must be asking now, how then can I actually put myself out there and make myself unique? Well, the one thing is, like I said earlier on, you could actually accomplish this by assessing your competition. So you want to look for pain points uh, or the pain points in your competitor's customer experience, okay? So you go in, read their reviews, and you'll be able to see what actually puts, um, you know, their past clients off. And then from then on, you'll be seeing what's actually preventing future clients from choosing your competitors. And if you see maybe they've got one-star reviews or very low reviews, um, and then there's no consistent messages that your competitor um, you know, is actually responding to those reviews or that your competitor is actually rude to your clients, then your USP could be you want to have, um, you know, five star track record and a very friendly personality. So whatever people are already doing out there, you want to do the opposite of um, if it's not a good thing and if it's if, if it's not a good thing and if it's good, then you want to amplify that, you know? And if it actually sounds like, you know, um, how you want to do your business, let everybody know how you deal with them and what the experience would be if they actually work with you, okay? So obviously this will be a very fun exercise if you do it well and if you do it right, you definitely, um, you know, shorten the learning curve, um, you know, in, in order for you to actually identify your target market. We actually did this with an accounting uh, firm the other time and what they realized was most of their competition um, you know, was actually attracting the wrong mob. Um, whereas they, you know, on their page, they were saying they were really good with businesses and uh, tradies and, you know, helping them do business accounting and tax returns. Only to find out when we looked at the reviews that um, their competition had, they had a string of teachers who were praising them for individual tax returns. So what does that tell you and inform you about the targeting um, that that competition was using? It just shows you that they were attracting the wrong person, um, you know, and trying to um, market to wrong type of uh, individual. Okay, so that automatically would make it easy for you to actually uh, write the right copy, write the right USP and actually put content out there for the right kind of person with the right kind of pain. So whatever brand ideas you can come up with, you know, and whatever, you know, unique selling propositions that you have, it's worth exploring um, if you really embody what you say you provide and what actually makes you different because there's no point in you trying to be something that you're not because this is the internet. You will soon get caught out. So your values and your service should be, um, you know, the actual building blocks uh, so that your brand actually stands out and you are, um, you know, inclined to do your very best at any given moment. Because if you try to be something that you are not, you will then over expand yourself and eventually what that turns out to be, um, you know, is, you know, your customers are not going to enjoy the service. All right. So this might sound like it's something simple, but this is the kind of stuff that we're putting out there. This is the kind of content that we're putting out there. And if we haven't figured out what our unique selling proposition is, it will make it super, super difficult for us to actually clarify our message and determine the best media for which we can actually reach out, um, you know, the people that we want to be serving. All right. And if people don't understand our marketing, they're not going to respond to it and they're not going to see how different we are. They're not going to choose us to be the best option and they're not even going to know what our business actually does. And then eventually what, what that leaves us doing is 
spraying and praying with our marketing and constantly, um, you know, repeating ourselves and making it very hard for people to actually engage with our services. And what what does that do or what does that show um, at the end of the day that we are not, um, you know, we are not prepared for the for the business or the job that we are actually saying we are good at okay so your unique selling proposition actually represents how your products and service are different from and actually better to your competition and that's why it's very critical to carefully craft a usp that accurately describes your brand and then promote it to your audience and it actually understands and remembers exactly why you are the best choice because in a sea of me too providers out there it will be so difficult for people to remember you um you know after they've been bombarded with information out there and half of the time we might just have one um you know trick that we're reaching out our audiences through maybe it's through social uh, media we can also use email marketing as a smart strategy so that we can constantly repeat our unique selling uh proposition to a targeted email list these are people that have already said they want to speak to us and you are conveying um you know the same message with that uh coming across as repetitive or actually being spammy you know and you really want people to um, have a better experience, especially the fact that they have worked with you. And obviously with what you're doing, you will be um, creating for and relating to your audience and helping them solve, um, you know, the problems that they might be facing that led them to you in the first place. So I can understand growing your business is tough. You're cold calling potential clients out there and having them hang up in your face and sending out hundreds of emails without even getting as much as hey thank you so much for reaching out and you're wasting thousands of dollars on your ad spend without even generating any qualified leads and sometimes it might feel like no one wants to buy what you're selling and you maybe you rely on your business to actually pay rent and put food on your table if you have a unique selling proposition i can guarantee you that you will foster a brand that is profitable and enjoyable and the more you repeat it the more um, people get to understand how they can engage with you and we all know that people do business with those that they know like and trust so I can't wait to see your unique selling proposition out there and you actually creating for and relating to your audience because remember our audience is always looking um, you know, to connect with people that can actually make their lives um, a whole lot easier because they don't want to continuously go through the pain that they're going through. So I'm hoping that this podcast just has tips on showcasing the ideas and values that actually make your business brand unique and that we um fully aware that it is very rare to be lucky enough to have a business uh, in an industry that isn't crowded with any competition. We do have competition around us and we can actually use the competition so we can leverage our message and reach our target audience with a unique selling proposition. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today this community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.